two men walk into the octagon, only one will walk out. Well, unless you count the referee, and if a big old ballet happens at the end of the fight, you've got to count that too. Hello, I'm Betty St. Laveau, and this is Octagon St. Laveau. I'm, um, I do the show because I have novice fever. I'm not a, I'm not someone who knows a lot about MMA, but I've been studying it for a year now, and I'm such a fan. I totally adore this sport. It is everything, honor, glory, heartache, and glory. Also, the warriors that I study uh, and admire, they're all about the fight. And they bow to one another before they walk into the octagon, and sometimes, and most of the time, they hug each other when they walk out. Now, uh, this particular um, uh, show will focus on the fact that, I think it was week before last, it was International Fight Week, UFC's International Fight Week. So it was very, very exciting. And ever since last year, I kind of have been looking at some of the matches, and I, w I haven't been bored one bit, but the Amanda Nunes and Holly Holm fight was very surprising, very stunning. Both these ladies had taken out Ronda Rousey. Amanda was fighting Holly. Holly was sort of the last person to cement Amanda's legendary status as both Bantamweight and, I want to say Walter Reed, but it's not Bantamweight and, I should know this. Let me check out my notes to make sure. Amanda is both the featherweight champion and the bantamweight. She's both the bantamweight champion and the featherweight champion. She has made history by not only having, uh, as female, not having both those titles, she is now one of the greatest fighters that have ever come around, especially in modern times that we know of. So let's start out with some pound for poundage uh, statistics first, and then we're going to go to the two fights I wanted to discuss. So, um, pound for pound featherweight division. The champ is Max Holloway. We'll start from number 15 and then we'll go up to number one. So, from 15 to 1, Nirsay Bektik, Ryan Hall, Shane Burgos, Arnold Allen, Calvin Katara, Renato Mogicano, Josh Emmett, Jeremy Stevens, Yael Rodriguez, Chan Sang Yun, Zibet Mago Shoku, Frankie Edgar, Jose Aldo, Brian Ortega, Alexander Volkanovsky, and the champ is Max Holloway. I especially like the featherweight division. They uh, seem very interesting, and it seems like the Low, the lower weight divisions are, um, they catch my eye. In the welterweight division, we're going to start from the bottom up. Vincente Lukek is number 15. Eliezer Dos Santos, Neil Magny, Leon Edwards, Damian Maya, Robbie Lauer, Ben Askren, Santiago Ponce Nobibo, Anthony Pettis, Stephen Thompson, Darren Till, Rafael Dos Anjos, Jorge Masvidal, Kobe Covington, Tyron Woodley, and Kamal Usman is the champ. This uh, division, they are uh, very visible to me. I like their, all their styles. Stephen Thompson's nickname is Wonder Boy. Robbie Lawler had an intense historical fight with Rory McDonald. You can catch it on YouTube. I tried to watch that fight. Please check out the welterweight division when you can. Lightweight champ. This is the lightweight division. Uh, the champ is Khabib, of course, but we're going to start from number 15 again. James Vick, Islam Makovchev, Alexander Hernandez, Gregor Gillespie, Charles Oliveira, Paul Felder, Anthony Pettis, Kevin Lee, Edson Barbosa, Ali Quanta, Justin Gagey, Donald Cerrone, Conor McGregor, Tony Ferguson, and Dustin Poirier. 
a lot of my favorite fighters are in the lightweight division, and the champ is Khabib, Noma Gadoff. They're incredible, incredible. And the way that they all handle the mic is something, too. At first, I thought Mr. Woodley was a little stiff on the mic, but I think that he's just getting used to doing that. But these guys, the way they fight, incredible, okay? So, featherweight. I think I just did that, right? I think I did. Well, let's just do it again, just in case I didn't. Featherweight, starting from 15. There's say Bechtick, Ryan Hall, Shane Burgos. Oh yeah, we did. Okay, so the champ there is Max Holloway. Oh, now I know why I'm looking at that list again. Max Holloway and Brian Ortega had the most intense, they had an incredible intense fight. Uh, Brian Ortega is just that tough. Uh, he got all marked up. Max Holloway didn't look like he had a scratch on him. That fight happened a couple months ago. Something I'll, I won't forget at the time soon. That's why I went back to that list. Okay, so let's check out the ladies division. The two divisions that I'm particularly fond of are straw weight and bantam weight. All right, so let's look at straw weight first. We're going to start at number 15 again. Jan Zionan, Courtney Casey, Carolina Kolkiewicz, Felice Herring, Cynthia Calavito, Alexa Grasso, Carla Esperanza, Tisha Torres, Michelle Watterson, Riley Zhang, Claudia G Gadella, Joanna Yuzetic, Nina Asron, Tatiana Suarez, Rose Amanujas, and Jessica Arande. Um, Carla Esperanza was actually the first woman strawweight champ, uh, ultimate fighting champion. Rose came in second on that fight. Rose has just lost her title, but for many of us, she will always be champ. Okay, I love the Rose. Bantamweight division, again, starting at number 15. Vivian Rojo, Sejera Eubanks, Lena Landsberg, Macy Chasen, Sarah McMahon, Irina Dana, Marin Renault, Yana Kuniskaya, Kat Zagano, Raquel Pennington, Aspen Ladd, Julia Pena, Holly Holm, Keaton Vera, Jermaine Durani, and Amanda Nunes, who's actually champ champ because Amanda holds both the bantamweight and featherweight. How can I forget? Okay, so to all of my fighters and to the ones I don't know yet, congratulations and props to all of you. You're doing some things and, and working out the way you are with your lives that I never could when it comes to fighting. All right, so um, I thought I had some notes about Amanda here. Amanda is, Amanda is incredible. 239 July 6, T-Mobile Arena. She consolidated her legacy by beating Holly Holm. Both these women, the nicest, nicest women you could ever meet. Both of them intensely athletic. Holly Holmes' nickname is the Preacher's Daughter, and Amanda Nunes' nickname is the Linus. They went at it, and Amanda won by a uh, head kick knockout. Pretty intense. Okay, she dropped back a weight to do this KO. She uh, Amanda Nunes has the longest title run of any female. She's on a nine fight winning sh streak and both these women smashed Ronda Rousey a couple years ago. Props to both of them and let's not forget Amanda uh, knocking out Chris Cyborg who is formidable in a 51 second knockout some time ago. All right. Thank you Linus. You are a inspiration to us all. Okay, so to the 400 pound elf in the room. We're going to discuss Jorge, Gamebred, Masvidal, knocking out Ben, Askren for it, Askren in five seconds flat a couple weeks ago. Ben Askren is a admired grappler and wrestler coming out of the Midwest. 
He's got a 19-0 uh, winning streak. He came to the UFC. He was traded with Demetrius Johnson. Uh, I think Ben came out one and won the promotion, and Demetrius Johnson went over to one. Ben came on the UFC, and all he's been doing is talk, 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 talk. He fought a fight with Robbie Lawyer. Very controversial decision. He won that fight. He's a known grappler. Jorge Masvidal stirred out um, as a semi proje of Kimbo Slice. Uh, he's been fighting since 2003, I believe or longer than that, Ben's, Ben hasn't been fighting as long as Jorge has been. So we've got, here's Ben's notes right there. Well, let's look at Ben's, Ben's stats real quick because he's right there. Born July 18th, 1984, uh, known for his massive afro and pinning style. Came out Bellator, he's married with three kids. Impressive grappling skills, his weight is 170 pounds. His reach is 72 inches, and he's been active since 2000, 2009 into the present. And yes, he has a, his win, 19 out of 21 fights, he's won. Okay. Um, Jorge. I know I've got Jorge's stats somewhere right here. Jorge's a pretty serious guy. Um, see if I can find Jorge. But right off the top of my head, I think I can talk about Jorge. Uh, uh, partnered with a beautiful woman named Iman Ala. He also has three children. Um, Jorge is funny, but lethal. Let's see. Well, we're going to talk more about Jorge in another episode at any rate. I can't believe I forgot my notes on him. But this is how, this is how it goes down, all right? If you look at the Mac Life, July 7th, 2019, you'll see that this particular after presser of Jorge's has 1,431,675 likes, all right? Uh, the fight happened, uh, the, fight was, the fight was over in five seconds. He made UFC history. Ben Askren had continually been talking a lot of crap, and Jorge went into the octagon with his hands behind his back. Ben came at him with his uh, signature move, which consists of going down, taking the guy down, and Jorge spun out of his side of the octagon with a knee kick and knocked the guy out flat and then gave him two punches for good measure. As the announcer saying, your fight clock is bought by Modelo, the fight was over. Uh, when you look, look at the presser, Jorge explained that why should he take him to task for celebrating and making fun of Ben when all Ben was doing was trash talking him but not really backing it up. He said, for a guy like that, it was a come down to fight a guy like him. He said, I'm a fighter. This guy, he's not a mean guy. He wants to hug me and put his face in my crotch. This crotch is not for men. You pay a heavy toll when you do that. And he said, Ben has other problems besides me knocking him out. Uh, I'm eating Whole Foods. I'm still going to slap him up. When I, off the cuff, kind of comment that on YouTube, my comment got 246 likes. I mean, I never get liked like that on YouTube if I make a comment, but this fight was polarizing in a way. Ben did not know where he was when he got up, and again, he doesn't look like he's built like a fighter. All respect to every woman out there 
the fans say the sky's built like a 59-year-old grandmother. I know 59-year-old grandmothers who are smoking hot, okay? So I don't want to disbend per se, but again, mostly men on YouTube are like, he's so handsome, he looks like a Greek god. Jorge's other nickname besides Game Bread is Street Jesus. Jorge's beautiful. Ben could be beautiful. He's got the nose, whatever. Everyone's like, oh, he's Chael's son and son. Pardon me for one moment. Son of Chael is Chael's son and son, his, his young son. Ben Askren cannot touch Chael's son in when it comes to grappling, pardon me, or even trash talking which is what he did. So when you have fighters like Colby Covington and Ben Askren, and they kind of don't fight a lot, and they talk, 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 you end up not really liking them a bit, and this is why this sport is so subjective. When it comes to football, baseball, you can see the t statistics, and you can see the talent. When it comes to fighting, you can also, but when someone is a pompous fool and they talk, 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 and they can't back it up, you don't want to see them fight, and I will never pay to watch Ben Askren fight. I just won't, and I'm a chick, I'm shallow. He's not that good looking because he's not really giving off any charisma, all right? However, Jorge, who I didn't really notice at all, and again, this being a subjective sport, I can't keep my eyes off this guy. I cannot keep my eyes off this guy. He's got a dry sense of humor. He's a serious fighter. He's there to fight, and he said, here's the deal, I'm gonna steal some of that hype, grab for my own, and go for a title shot. Well, that's all up to Mr. Dana White, so we'll see what happens with that. Um, I, I find that it's easy to pick sides in a fight. When you're not a fighter, and you're not a warrior, and all you want to do is see the blood, that, that's, that's not very good. I hope I always remain a humble novice. I hope that I remember my own lack of objectivity in this sport, but I don't want to hear a guy put down anyone's heritage, their family, their woman, or nothing. You get in there and you fight. You talk about your skills. You don't diss the person and tell, call the other person a coward and then get knocked out after five seconds. It's just not the dumb thing. So an international fight week totally kind of perked me up. But it's not that this year hasn't been exciting and it's not that there haven't been any great fights. But that five second knockout took everyone's breath away and is still taking everyone's breath away. And, and Ben Askren, he, um, people say he is, you know, said I deserved it. Um, just, you know, try not to get knocked out next time, dude, and try to do something more than go for the guy's torso, okay? And props to Jorge Masvidal, I'll be checking you out, all right? Um, you know how to get the job done, and um, I think that um, I wouldn't want to do that at me, okay? So. That's it for me for the moment. This is Octagon St. Laveau. I'm your hostess, Betty St. Laveau, discussing novice fever. If you're into MMA, check it out. And if you're not, um, that's okay too. Bless you all. Peace and um, uh, uh, love to you all. Okay, take care until next episode. Chat.